Hi there Equinox owners. Today in your 2020 Chevrolet Equinox, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Demco's Stay and Play Duo Supplemental Braking System with the Coachlink Wireless Monitor. There are five main components you'll need when flat towing your vehicle behind your motorhome. You'll need your tow bar, which is the connection between your motorhome and your vehicle. You need your base plate, which is the point on your vehicle where your tow bar will attach. You also need your safety cables, which is a supplemental connection in addition to your tow bar. You'll need your diode wiring or a lighting solution that will provide all the signals from your motorhome at the back of the vehicle so people know your intentions when going down the road. And lastly, you'll need is a supplemental braking system, which will apply the brakes in your vehicle when you hit them in your motorhome to help you come to a safe stop. Now there are some other accessories that you may need depending on your particular vehicle and your motorhome. So one of them over here is our high-low adapter and this is just going to vary depending on your vehicle and motorhome combination. You want your base plate and your receiver hitch to be within three inches of one another at center to center. So we had to drop this down in order to get this nice level towing. If it's up too high or too low it'll pull up and down on the vehicle every time you take off and that can wear out your suspension, tires, and a lot of other components, so we want to avoid that and have it nice and straight. Also on our Equinox, as a special procedure, as part of its um, flat tow mode, the key does need to remain in, the, in an accessory position, which keeps things powered up in the vehicle, so I highly recommend a charge line kit so that way your vehicle's not going dead when being pulled down the road, because it is designed to stay in that on position. Lastly, we did add a stoplight switch to this. That is a necessary component just because of the braking system that we had chosen. If you would go with a Blue Ox Patriot, you wouldn't need a stoplight switch, but for the Stay and Play Duo, Air Force One, and many of the other ones, you will need one. Your supplemental braking system is a necessary component that will apply the brakes in your vehicle when you hit them in your motorhome to help you come to a safe stop. Stay and Play Duo is a proportional system so it uses an inertia sensor that's inside the vehicle that will detect the motion of the vehicle so when you are hitting the brakes it detects that you're slowing it down and it will apply the force on the pedal appropriately so it matches your motorhome so it's nice and smooth. The system uses an actuating cylinder located on the brake pedal and when it receives that inertia signal as well as a brake signal from your motorhome it will activate the cylinder to pull the brake pedal close to the firewall which activates the brakes. To simulate this so you can see it, we're going to go ahead and pull our breakaway switch pin because it can be difficult to activate it with the inertia sensor. And the magic that activates the actuator located on the pedal comes from the operating unit here. Inside there is a vacuum pump. It draws vacuum on the power booster for your brake so that way you have power assist which makes it easier for the actuating cylinder to apply the brake pedal. You can see the output has an air uh, tube that goes inside that would connect to that cylinder to apply it. Now Demco Stay and Play Duo, this is my preferred braking system. I think this is the best one out there on the market if you have hydraulic brakes. If your motorhome has air brakes, then I would recommend Demco's Air Force One instead because it's specifically designed for those air brake systems. But there are other options out there. Blue Ox is Patriot is a very good portable braking system. So if you have something that you might have multiple vehicles you flat tow with, you can easily move it back and forth. Or if you just don't want to go through the installation of putting a full braking system like this in, the Patriot's very good and it's quick and easy to install because it's just one you set up on the floor each time. We're now inside of our motor home where we went ahead and plugged in the receiver end for the coach link. It just plugs into your auxiliary outlet to power it up. And that's really all you have to do. It has rubber feet on the bottom so it doesn't slide around on your dash and you can turn the buzzer off with the switch on the back. The buzzer will only activate if the brakes have been applied for an excessive amount of time. So we're going to go ahead and apply the brakes. We can pull the safety pin and that should illuminate our signal up here at the front. We'll begin our installation by installing all of our major components. One of the things you might notice is that we've got the fascia removed here, and that's because we just recently put the base plate on, and this is the best opportunity to complete the rest of your flat tail setup, which includes your braking system, because it's a lot easier to route your wiring once you've done this. The first and largest part is our operating unit. We mounted that right here on the driver's side by just attaching it to the fuse box cover. You can see that there's some zip ties that run down through it, and all I did for this is I just pulled up on the cover. There's some little tabs here. There's one also on this side. 
And if we look, you can see I just drilled some holes in it. And then I ran the zip ties around through the holes that already exist in the unit there and just zip tied it right to it. And then it'll just snap right back into place. I did use a little bit of silicone on the inside of each of those to seal those back up. Also on the outside, we need to mount up our breakaway switch. Now this is likely gonna vary depending on the base plate that you got. We're using Kurt's base plate, which doesn't come with any accommodations for wiring. So we made ours out of a long bracket that we have available here at E-Trailer. It's a no drill bracket that clamps on to like a trailer hitch. We clamped it right onto the base plate. We drilled a hole just right in front of the opening that's in the no drill bracket. And we use the hardware that comes included with the breakaway switch in your kit to secure it on there. There's a bolt with a flat washer on it that goes up through it with a lock nut on the other side to hold it in place. And we use 11 millimeter socket wrench to tighten them down. And you wanna leave it a little bit loose. You can see that the bolt and the nut's not gonna spin just this part. And this is always gonna ensure no matter what direction your motor home is, in the event you did have a catastrophic disconnect, it could pull your pin. Now inside the vehicle, we need to mount the actuating cylinder, which we put on the brake pedal right here. We just clamped it right around the pedal. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice is when you first take this out of your kit, your bolts aren't gonna be nearly this long. They're gonna be this long. This is what they come installed in it right out of the kit. They're too short to clamp around the pedal with those bolts, but it, in your kit, you do receive extra long bolts. So you'll just need to disconnect the arm here. There's two Allen bolts that you'll remove here, and that will let you take this whole arm off. You can then screw out the old bolts and then thread in the longer ones to use those. The other plate here will then slide around the other side of your pedal and you'll use the nuts that are attached to it to secure it. When tightening these down, I don't use a tool uh, like a ratchet or anything. I just use the socket in my hand and I just tighten it by hand because you don't want to over tighten and bend these brackets too much and you can get plenty of tightness and clamping force by just using the socket on your hand. You can see here this thing's not going to go anywhere even if you were to you know, hit it with your foot a little bit by accident or something. If you're moving around in the cab, you're not gonna knock it out of position. Next, we wanna look at the position of it. It's going straight back towards our firewall. And here at the back, we have a small plate that does come included with your kit. I did peel the carpet back and I cut some of the insulation out here to make sure that it was exposed directly to the firewall's metal there. And then I used two of the self-tapping screws that come included to just run it right into the metal right there. This is right at the edge here where this corner turns. So we wanted to get it as close to that edge as possible so that way we had some of the bracket hanging off the end. What was hanging off the end is gonna give us the straightest possible path that we can with our brake pedal here to allow it to line up at the back. So we wanna have a nice straight pull. We don't want this cable like rubbing against the side of this. It'll eventually wear out your cable there. And then we just attached it with a bolt and a nut. We did have to provide this ourselves uh, in order to secure it here. But a 5 16 bolt with a lock nut is a good option to use that. You can get that at your local hardware store. Now that you've got that secured there, you'll wanna push the cable in. It's okay to have some slack. We've got just a little bit of slack there and we wanna have just a tiny bit to ensure that our pedal, our cylinder here is never applying force on our pedal, holding a little bit of brake pressure. We wanna take out a good majority of that slack and it's just looped around in here. It should come like that already, but if not, you just loop it back through feed some of that through there and then there is a set screw here on the end. You'll want to tighten this down to hold the cable in place at the position you set it to. When tightening this down you don't want to over tighten it because you can damage the cable. I found that tightening it um, down until it feels pretty flush is about the right amount of tightness to keep it from your cable from pulling through but also where it's not going to damage it. And then on the inside to the left of our cylinder over here on the kick panel just to the outside we mounted the control box. There's just two screws that we ran right into this panel here. You want to make sure this box is fairly level um, up and down because it is an inertia sensor inside here that detects the movement of the vehicle and it needs to see that the vehicle is stopping. If you have to feel that slowness and the force going in that direction. In between the cylinder that we mounted and our control unit, there's kind of a part where your insulation sticks out right here. We got like a little bulge. There's a grommet located behind this. So we took our razor knife and we slid it up here to allow us to pass our cables through so we can get to that grommet. And then you can also just kind of push this insulation up on the one side and then you can kind of just tuck that over. And here you can see that grommet where most of your factory wiring goes through. 
we took a drill bit and we just drilled through here to the outside. We don't want to be all the way to the outside, so we want to make sure we're drilling through the grommet, but we also don't want to be too close to our wiring where we're going to damage anything. Once we drilled through it, we used the airline tubing that comes in our kit here because it's plenty stiff to where you can push it through this and then we could grab it on the outside. After we pushed this through, we went ahead and took the wires that are coming off the control unit here and we used some electrical tape to tape it to our uh, airline tubing here because we can use this as a fish wire to pull these wires through. You also will need a couple additional components to complete your installation on your Equinox here. We need a stoplight switch to make the indicator light that comes with work. Inside a stoplight switch, you do get some wiring. We also took the red wire out of that kit and we're gonna use this to push through with it as well so we can power up that stoplight switch. The stoplight switch is located here. This again comes separate with your kit. It's not part of it, but it is necessary in order to make um, the indicator work because the stoplight switch that's on your vehicle isn't a full stoplight switch. It's actually a pedal position sensor, so it doesn't give us the right signal that we can use. But this accessory here will. We just need to wire it up. There's just two wires to it, and we'll show you how to wire that up as well. But you do need to make sure you have this mounted. And while you're routing your wiring through the firewall, getting that red wire run through will make your life a little bit easier. In order to mount this unit, if we look up, it just attaches to a screw that's located on the steering column. You'll simply remove that screw, push this up, and then reattach it. One of the things you'll notice, though, if you look up, is we need to have a ground for the light the signal light that's on our system. So we went ahead and took a ring terminal and some white wire that came with our stoplight switch and we attached a ring terminal to it and we put it underneath that nut before we screwed it back down to give us a ground circuit. The stoplight switch itself will then screw into the bracket here and you can adjust the length of it to ensure that the plunger is depressed when the brake pedal is in its resting position. And then when you press on the brake pedal, the plunger on the switch will then pop out and that will actually complete the circuit, which will activate our light. If we look at the back of our switch, there's two wires coming off of it. One of them will need to, to connect to a power source. That's the red wire that we talked about that we had run out that came with the switch. And the other wire that's coming off of here will need to connect to the monitor light that comes with your kit. The monitor light comes from a wireless box here. There's actually another part that goes in your motorhome that you just plug into the dash, but this is what sends the signal to that. And it's that, that's going to get that signal from this stoplight switch because the power wire here, when this depresses, it's going to complete the circuit. It's going to send it over to our box. And we just connect that to the wires coming off. And it's a red wire here off of our box that we connect to one of the wires on the stoplight switch. The other wire off the box is our ground wire. It's a black wire and you can see that here there's only two wires coming off of this box so your white wire connects to the other one which is a black wire so before we head outside to pull our fish wire through take the other end of it here and we're just going to push it right into our cylinder it's a quick connect fitting and it'll poke right in there we can trim off the excess once we've pulled it through Behind the coolant bottle, which is located just behind the battery on the driver's side in the engine compartment, your grommet's located on the firewall there. It is tucked down kind of far behind it. I used a pair of long needle nose pliers to grab the fish wire, that, uh, which was our airline tubing that we poked through, and then I pulled that up. And it had our wires attached to it, so we had pulled all those up. And you can see the wires right here coming up through here. The airline tubing, I routed a little bit differently but I pulled the wires up here and we routed the wiring over just to the side of our battery. And this is where the majority of our connections are gonna be made here for our wiring. The airline tubing, instead of going off to the right, I took it off to the left of the coolant bottle here and it runs around this way and it will plug right into the quick connect fitting here on our unit. You do have to trim the end before plugging it in. You just want to get rid of that excess. And there's a special set of cutters you'll want to use when cutting airline tubing. When cutting your airline tubing, you need a nice clean square cut. So something like this wouldn't work. You'd poke that in and it's not going to seal properly. A set of hose cutters like this will ensure you can have a nice clean square cut that doesn't squeeze our hose. If you use a pair of just like a regular pair of wire cutters or something, it's going to squeeze the hose and it's going to deform it so it won't seal. But this will work very well just like this. We do have sets of hose cutters here at each trailer We've got a nice smaller set that's a little bit easier to use. This is more of a larger industrial pair. 
So now we need to hook up all of our wires. We've got four wires here that come off of the operating unit here. You'll have a black, a brown, a blue, and a red. We're gonna start hooking these up. So the blue wire is going to connect to our breakaway switch. We're gonna connect to this to the black wire that's coming from the breakaway switch that we'd mounted in the front. We just routed those wires, just following our factory wiring right up here until we get back here. So we just make that connection there with a heat shrink butt connector. If you need heat shrink butt connectors, you can get some here at e-trailer. I highly recommend those over regular ones for any connections outside the vehicle to ensure that they stay moisture and corrosion free. If we move on next to the red wire, this is just gonna hook to the red wire that came from the control unit on the inside. Make sure you don't get that mixed up with the red wire that we ran from the stoplight switch. This needs to go to the control unit. The black wire coming off of your operating unit connects to the black wire coming from the control unit on the inside that we had routed out. Now we have our brown wire coming off of our operating unit. This is our power wire. This one needs to eventually connect to the battery. So if we look here, we have a fuse harness that comes from the battery. We took the fuse harness and it comes in a loop. We just cut it in half. And if we lift up on our cover top here, we just took a ring terminal, attached it to one side, removed this nut with a 13 millimeter socket, slid it on, and then reinstalled it. And that'll just snap back in place. I do recommend leaving your fuse out until you finish the install, so that way nothing's powered up. On the other end, we have our heat shrink butt connector, and there's actually three wires that connect in together here. Our brown wire from our operating unit, the orange wire from the breakaway switch at the front, and then this is the red wire that's going to the stoplight switch on the inside right here, because that also needs power. So we do have a couple of wires left that we have not hooked up yet. From the control unit on the inside, you're also gonna have a green and a yellow wire. Those green and those yellow wires, they need to tap into the diode wiring that's installed on your vehicle, so that way it's able to get braking and turn signal information. So we just took the green and the yellow wire from our diode wiring, that's our right and our left stop turn signals. We cut those on the diode wiring and we added the wires from our control unit on the inside by using heat shrink butt connectors by just adding them onto one side and then crimping them on and reattaching them there. We now need to tap into the vacuum booster system on our vehicle and this is going to ensure that when this unit applies it's going to pull vacuum on our power assist here so that way we're going to have power assist when it applies the brake pedal. So in order to do this we'll need to find the factory vacuum line that's coming off the booster. So the booster is located here. Here we have our hose coming off of it. We snipped it here with the hose cutters and then we actually did take another section out of it. We snipped it again about there to take out a good little chunk of section. And you are gonna need some additional hose that doesn't come included with your kit to complete this. We have some half inch hose here that we used to slide over our factory line. That's what doesn't come in your kit because it's so thick here, the hose that comes in the kit is actually too small to slide over it. But you do get adapters that come in the kit, so it's cool to give you the adapter. So we use the larger hose, then we take the adapter that comes in the kit, which has a large nipple that'll poke in here. And then we use the hose that comes in our kit, and we're cutting about inch, inch and a half sections. I'd say probably about an inch and a half to two inches. Uh, and then we're sliding this onto the smaller end of that adapter. Here we have our T-fitting, which slides in here. The other end of our T-fitting, we've got another section of hose, and then we have our check valve. The check valve here, we wanna make sure that we have the black part of the check valve facing towards our engine, which is off down here. Another small section of hose, we go into another adapter, into that larger hose you'll have to get from your local hardware store. And then we clamp it on each side where it goes to our factory hose again. Then back at our T-fitting, with the hose we have remaining that comes in our kit, we poke on there and we kind of just wrap it around, trying to give us nice gentle curves heading over towards our operating unit here. The check valve should already be inserted, but if it isn't, you wanna make sure it's inserted in this orientation here. And then trim any excess off that you need to and poke it right on there. To, in order to get your hose to slide onto the, the barb fittings, I use a little bit of silicone spray and that makes them slide on a lot easier. 
So now that we've got everything connected together, before we reinstall our fascia and proceed forward, it's a good idea to test everything out and make sure that it's working properly. So you'll want to make sure you put that fuse into the fuse harness that we talked about leaving out. And we also want to make sure our monitor's working. So inside the car, I've went ahead and plugged in the other portion. This would normally go in your motorhome. We just plugged it into the cigarette lighter in the vehicle here so we could test it. I did have to turn the key to the accessory position, so just push the button on your dash once and that'll turn that outlet on. And then down on your control unit, you'll want to make sure you have this flipped to the on position. We can now pull the pin out of our breakaway switch at the front and the system should operate. We can hear it activate and we can also see that the indicators have illuminated on the wireless system. Now that we've tested everything out and everything's working properly here, we can go ahead and reinstall our fascia and install any other accessories that we might want to with this one. Some other things you might want to consider on your Equinox here is a charge line kit because it is necessary when placing it into flat toe. Once all of your components are installed, we can just reinstall our fascia in reverse order. We showed you where we trimmed it out there and slid it forward. And then we're also going to show you just how we got our electrical solution solved here. We used a no drill bracket and put it on and that passes through the opening here at the bottom and gives us a place where we could attach our breakaway switch to as well. We can go ahead and finish up our wiring now that we've got that set up here at the front. So now that we've got our braking system all the way installed, you'll notice on the control box that we mounted on the inside there's a sensitivity adjustment. We'll need to set this and the easiest way to do it is to hook up to your motorhome, so just plug your cables in. So that way you can send signals to your system and then just go ahead and turn on the hazard lights in your motorhome. We've got those on right now. Hazard lights, since it turns on both the left and right turn signals, it pulses those. It's actually going to pulse us a brake signal that we can use for our inertia sensor adjustment. So I've already got those hazards on. I'm going to hit the on switch over here to arm the system. And you can see that it's activating it in pulses with our, turn sig with our uh, hazard lights. We're now going to slowly push up on the knob. We've unscrewed it and we're just slowly pushing it up until our system stops. We kind of want to be about an eighth inch up from where that activation occurs because we don't want brakes to apply when we are at a stop. We only want them to occur when there's an inertia signal moving this thing to activate our cylinder. So now that we've got that set, we've tightened it down, we've got our sensitivity set up pretty well. We can go ahead and turn it off and go ahead and place our vehicle in flat tow and we're ready to hit the road. And that completes our installation of Demco's Stay and Play Duo Supplemental Braking System with the Coachlink Wireless Monitor on our 2020 Chevrolet Equinox.